Hi, class. Hello to those of you at home. Uh, today's Monday, October the 5th, and the uh, mock test included four questions, 38, 41, 45, and 49 on your handout. Question 38 is answered over there. It, it asks, indicate the number of significant figures in each of the following <laughs> measured quantities. And for significant fingers, figures, it simply means how many numbers are are quoted in the, in the in the value. So 3.7745 gives you five significant figures. With significant figures, remember that decimals are uh, are not counted. If it's before the if the if there's a zero between a decimal and another and other numbers, then you don't count them. There's none like that in here. So uh, all the answers are pretty straightforward. 205 is three significant figures. Uh, C is four significant figures. You might be tempted to not count those two zeros after the seven, but they do count. If somebody writes two zeros after a number, that means they've measured it to that level of accuracy, so those are significant. Uh, for D, if you put point zero, it also means that it's significant. It means you've measured it to that level of, of uh, accuracy. And then last one, there's six significant figures. Again, the zero after the eight is significant. And also the zero before the eight is significant because it's trapped between digits. If the zero is trapped between digits, it's significant. The only time it's not significant is if it's trapped between the decimal and, and there's only numbers on one side. Uh, 41, A? Yes, 12.0550. And, and for that one, the question is, carry out the following operations and express the answers with the appropriate number of significant figures. So in addition and subtraction, the number of significant figures is going to be determined by the number of decimals, the number of digits after the decimal. So if you only have two numbers after the decimal in one number and four numbers after the decimal in another number, you can only report your answers to Two, di two digits after the decimal because that's the less accurate one. So that's what's going to determine the level of accuracy of the whole measurement. It's like, you know, uh, if you drive onto a, a truck scale with a cement truck and then you, and then, uh, and then a man walks onto the truck scale, onto the truck scale later and you, and you find the total weight, you know, it's not going to be super accurate for the man's weight because the truck scale is probably sensitive in five pound increments the number probably won't change unless there's about a five pound change in weight so a human being plus or minus five pounds is is a significant part of your body weight whereas plus or minus five pounds to a truck that weighs ten thousand is 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 a tiny uh it's a tiny percentage b um It shows 257.2 minus 19.789. There's one decimal place minus something with three decimal places. Your answer can only have one decimal place, and that's what you can see. I rounded it to there, even though the calculator readout would say 2.37411. I would only, I would cut it off at one number after the decimal in that case for an addition or subtracting. That's what you do. For C, it's a multiplication. In the multiplications you're only allowed to report your answer to the same level of accuracy as the number that is uh, containing the least number of significant figures. So the least number of significant figures here is that one with only three. So our answer can't have more than three significant figures. Although when you do it in the calculator, you get all these numbers in the readout, you're going to cut it off at the 6-6. Six, six. Then uh, 45A, it says perform the following conversions. Of course, when you're doing conversions, you have to know what the conversion factor is. You have to know, for example, that there's a thousand milliliters per liter, and you have to know which way to put it. Are you going to put the thousand on top, or are you going to put the thousand on the bottom? The way you decide is what are you trying to cancel? You're trying to cancel the liters, so you're going to put liters on the bottom, and that allows you to cancel liters. A thousand times 0 0.076 gives you 76. How do I do this in my head? I know that 1,000 can also be called 10 to the power of 3. Well, 10 to the power of 3, if you multiply it by any number, uh, is going to move the decimal over three times. So 1, 2, 3, turns it into 76. Okay? That's how, you, that's how I got the answer without using my calculator. B. 
uh, 5.0 times 10 to the minus 8 meters, turn it into nanometers. So uh, we know that the conversion factor between nanometers and meters is 10 to the power of 9 nanometers in 1 meter. I put meters on the bottom so I can cancel meters. And then 10 to the minus 8 times 10 to the positive 9 gives you 10 to the positive 1, which is 10. So 5 times 10 gives you 50. There's your answer. Again, no calculator usage was necessary. C, 6.88 times 10 to the 5 nanoseconds. There are 10 to the 9 nanoseconds per second. This time I want to get rid of nanoseconds, so I put nanoseconds in the denominator. That allows me to cancel nanoseconds. And then if I, to do this in my head, what I did is I brought this into the numerator, turning it into 10 to the negative 9, following the rules of exponents, which you know. 10 to the 5 times 10 to the negative 9 gives you 10 to the negative 4. And then I write the rest of it, because 10 to the negative 4 times 6.88, that part does, remains unchanged. And then the unit is seconds, because the seconds hasn't canceled. That's the thing that's left over. Then they ask you to change pounds into grams. So the conversion factor is 453.59 grams per pound. Pounds are canceled by putting pounds in the denominator on the conversion factor, because it's here in the numerator. 0.5 times that number gives you 226.795. This is the readout you get in your calculator, but you're only allowed two significant figures, so you're going to report it as 2.3. So what you have to recognize is that this 2 is the limit. This is where you're going to cut it off, but because this is a 6, you're going to round up. So it becomes 2.3 times 10 to the power of 2. Or if you like, you can write 230, because 10 to the power of 2 is 100. And the next one, they ask you to convert kilograms per meter cubed into grams per liter cubed. You have to know that there's a thousand grams in the kilogram and that there's one meter cubed in the thousand liters. This cancels out nicely. The thousand cancels with the thousand. The meters cubed cancels with the meters cubed and the kilograms cancels with the kilograms. So what you're left with is uh, grams per liter. I, I shouldn't have crossed out the liter part there. Grams per liter and the number remains the same because a thousand over a thousand is one so it doesn't change the value. And there's your final answer for that one. Let's turn now to the second board. On the second board, you're asked to turn 31 gallons into liters. The conversion factor for gallons is 3.78 per one gallon. So you get 117.347 blah, blah, blah liters. You're only allowed two significant figures because you only had two over here. So your answer has to be cut off over here. How are you going to do that? Well, you're going to write it as a scientific notation. and so you could rewrite it as one point. Since this is a seven, this rounds up to a two. So that's how you get 1.2 times 10 to the power of two. How did I get 10 to the power of two? It's because I moved the decimal twice to get it over there to maintain the same value. This is the last time I'm going to do this. I'm not doing any more of this because I've, I've been doing it for a long time now. And you guys have to actually look through the stuff and learn it. And the next thing we're going to do is the periodic table, OK? Because uh, we got to move on with the units. I want to get at least two units done before the quad's over. Uh, the next thing is 150 pounds being converted to milligrams. So, uh, well, let me read you the question because this one's a bit more complicated. 49B. It says, the recommended adult dose of el 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 elixophilin, a drug used to treat asthma, is 6 milligrams per kilogram of body mass. Calculate the dose in milligrams for a 150-pound person. So you need six milligrams per kilogram of body weight. The person weighs 150 uh, pounds, and it's one kilogram per, two point, per 0 0.204 uh, pounds. So the pounds cancel, the kilograms cancel, you go, and you're going to multiply 150 by six, divide by 2.204, and you get 408 milligrams of the drug. There's only two sig figs in this answer, in this number. Now, actually, there's only one sig fig here. So our answer has to be limited to one sig fig. And that's what we have there. To get it into three sig figs, you'd have to put a decimal here. If I don't put the decimal, that's only one significant figure. So 408, you see, um, is going to round down to, to 400 because this is 0.1. This is like 41, but one rounds down to zero. So it's going to be 400 milligrams for the dose of the drug. <clears throat> With drugs, you have to always be careful. Uh, they're always based on when you read the bottle. For example, it'll say do not take more than 12 aspirins over a period of one day. Uh, they base that on, on the body weight of probably the lightest person who's going to take the aspirin, which would likely be, say, the, you know, a 100-pound woman. So you, you, as an adult, I mean, 
So the lightest you'll get as an adult is about 90 to 100 pounds. So they base the dosages on that. Because if you base the dosages on, say, a 200-pound man, a 100-pound woman is going to get an overdose. So they make the do to be safe, they make the dosages lower, which, which is why a lot of the times on over-the-counter drugs, you could probably safely exceed the dosages briefly, but not for long periods of time, because then it becomes dangerous for other reasons. Uh, for example, with Tylenol, if you take it for long periods of time, your body runs out of a certain substance that helps to get rid of the Tylenol, and then your liver activates to try to detoxify it, and it ends up becoming poisonous. You can, you can actually kill yourself with Tylenol. People have, been, people have destroyed their livers by using too much Tylenol. Uh, yeah, so 400 milligrams is the dose. And 49C, it says, uh, if an automobile is able to travel 200... 54 miles on 11.2 gallons of gasoline. What is the gas mileage in kilometers per liter? So you have 254 miles per 11.2 gallons. Uh, I'm getting rid of miles here, 5280 feet per mile. I'm getting rid of feet here, 12 inches per foot. I'm getting rid of, of uh, inches over here. Getting rid of centimeters over here. Getting rid of meters. And where's gallons? Gallons is also gone over here. So what are we left with at the end is kilometers and liters, which is what we wanted. So in our calculator, I will enter th this divided by that, times this, times this, times this, divided by that, divided by that, divided by that. So if it's in the bottom, you divide. If it's in the top, you multiply. What you get at the end is 9.64165139 kilometers per liter, which you then round down to three significant figures. And that's why you get 9.64 as your final answer, kilometers per liter. <clears throat> D, 49D. It says, uh, how many liters of wine can be held in a wine barrel? No, sorry. Uh, a pound of coffee beans yields 50 cups of coffee. Four, quarts equals one, uh, four cups equals one quart. How many milliliters of coffee can be obtained from one gram of coffee beans? So one pound is 50 cups, four cups is a quart, four quart is a gallon. One gallon is 3.785 liters, and one liter is 1,000 milliliters. So uh, look, watch how everything cancels. Cups cancels, quarts cancel, gallons cancel, liters cancel, and you get pounds. Oh, pounds also cancel. And you're left with grams per milliliter, which is not really telling us much. So I flipped it over to turn into milliliters per gram. See what happens when I flip it over? If I take the reciprocal, if I use the x to the minus 1 button on the calculator, then I get uh, this number, and the, the units become also flipped over, milliliters per gram, so you get after sig figs, which you're only allowed one, because it said one pound. So you're, you'll get 30 milliliters per gram of coffee. This is actually a pretty cool problem, because it puts it all together for you. That's it for that one. And, uh, okay, I'm going to stop there.